Well, hello everyone. This is Brother Don at Country Homestead Preacher. I'd like to welcome you to the Monday edition of 10 Minutes in the Word. It is August the 2nd, 2021. I am Brother Don and your Bible teacher, and I apologize for not having our uh, microphone, uh, having some technical difficulties with it. So hopefully I can talk loud enough where you can hear me just fine. I hope you had a great weekend in the Lord. Hope you walked with the Lord. Hope you spent time with God's people. Hope you were in His Word. So thank you for coming by today. We are in the book of Acts, chapter number 5. Then we are talking about Ananias and Sapphira. And as we get ready to pray, let's remember all the folks that are sick. And y'all know, folks, this virus is kicked back up and different places in the country. So let's pray for everybody. Uh, for their health and, and pray for uh, confidence and just pray that people are walking within the Holy Spirit as this is trying times, difficult times, but we are in this thing together with the help of Jesus Christ. We're going to make it through. Let's pray together. Gracious Lord, we thank you for this day that you've given us. Lord, we come here needy, Lord. We are needy people. Father, we come here with supplications and prayers Lord we'd ask that you'll touch all those who are sick and afflicted Lord all those who are battling the, the, the pandemic and, and other sicknesses Lord and for those with relationship problems and most of all we pray for those that don't know you as Lord and Savior Father we'd ask that you'll touch them Lord today we pray that you'll open the scripture up so we'll understand your will and your way in Jesus name Amen all right, well, Acts chapter number five. Uh, just to catch you up a, a, a moment here, um, the, the new believers, some of them had sold land, took the proceeds, put it at the feet of the apostles. There was a couple here who sold land, had the prasana or gave the impression that they was given all and told the Holy Spirit they were given all but yet held back part of the proceeds. And we just read where uh, uh, Peter said this was in your control in verse number four. Uh, it was your own, you had the control, but you have lied not to men, but to God. And then in verse five it said, Ananias hearing these words fell down and breathed his last. So great fear came upon them. And the young men arose and wrapped him up, carried him out, and buried him. Now it was about three hours later when his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter answered her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. She said, Yes, for so much. Then Peter said to her, How is it that you have agreed together to test the Spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husbands are at the door, and they will carry you out. Then immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. And the young man who came in found her dead and carrying her out buried her by her husband. So great fear came upon all the church and upon all those who heard these things. And after studying more thoroughly what they did, they violated the Holy Spirit. They didn't simply make some sort of promise they made an inward promise by way to the Holy Spirit and then they lied about it. Now this brings us up to a point, uh, up to a point of discussion here that I think we need to thresh out. And that is, let's take a few minutes and talk about the importance of us being the temple of God and us being the abode of God. Now I want you to clearly understand this folks. Uh, no longer is God in the building. No longer is he in the temple if you will. God now exists in us by way of the Holy Spirit. So how important is that? And we're going to thresh this out right here. It's very important. Very important. I want to take you on a trip just for a little while over here to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12 verse number 1 how this situation with Ananias and Sapphira how did it, it, how did it get so bad? What is the importance of the Holy Spirit 
living inside of us. Well, let's see what the Apostle Paul says about it in Romans chapter 12, verse number 1. He said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Now, I want to stop right there just for a minute. Used to, back in the Old Testament, the men would, would go to the priest and the priest would offer up sacrifices on behalf of the people. But here Paul says, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Now, when you think this through, how can we present ourselves, live day to day, as walking sacrifices to the Lord? Well, he's going to tell us. He said, don't be, well, and, excuse me, let me kick back, which is your reasonable service. In other words, we present ourselves a living sacrifice, which is our service. And do not be conformed to this world. And it's very clear here that we as God's people who are walking out a testimony, who are, are walking out a sacrifice, we're not to be conformed. That, that means that if you took a jello mold and you poured the jello in the mold, the jello is going to conform to the mold. Here Paul says, don't be conformed to this world. In other words, don't let this world conform who you are. Because we're different. We are walking, living sacrifices. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed or in the Greek metamorphosis, which is what a caterpillar does when it goes from being a caterpillar to a butterfly it is metamorphosis it is transformed by the renewing of our mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God can I tell you something folks if you're living in the world if you got one foot stepped in the world, if your life is conforming to this world, if your flesh is driving you, stop thinking you know God's will for your life because we can only know God's will. Hear me clear, please. We can only know God's will for our life if we are not conforming to this world and if we are being transformed by the renewing of our mind. That is the work of the Holy Spirit in us. Turn over, if you would, please, to the book of 1 Corinthians, and I'm fixing to clear this here thing up. Uh, <coughs> I've heard several people talk about it in uh, previous weeks, and we're going to clear it up right here. Paul says in 2 Corinthians uh, verse 12, I'm sorry, uh, chapter 6, verse 12, Paul says, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I'll not be brought under the power of any. Food is for the stomach and stomach for the food, but God will destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Now I want you to notice 15 very clearly. We look in Ananias and Sapphira and we say, man, that is a drastic thing that happened. But you've got to understand, God was setting order. The church was in infancy. He was setting order. And the Lord wanted to, to drive in the point of how serious it is the, uh, that the Holy Spirit lives inside of us how we are to conduct ourselves. Notice what Paul says. Excuse me, in verse number 15. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? So I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot. Shall I take the members of Christ and make them a member of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee sexual immorality, ever sin that a man does outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Now pay attention. 
Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and who, and you are not your own? For you were bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Now let me clear this up one, once and for all here. There's people who look at this and say, that only applies to sexual sin. That is a foolish argument, and it is an unbiblically substantiated argument. Because Paul says at the end in verse 20, you were bought with a price, glorify God in your body. Which, uh, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. In other words, our body is a temple uh, of God. Our body, by dwelling the Holy Spirit in us, it's very important how we live. It's very important how we walk. It's very important how we talk. The sexual immorality, sure it's important, but also is how you eat, how you speak, how you have relationship. In other words, if you're going to be a Christian and you're going to say that you have Jesus and the Holy Spirit living inside of you, your life best uh, point out that fact. That's all I'm saying. Because if we go about our life and we dabble in the world and we conform to this world, you cannot give testimony to the inner working of Jesus Christ inside of you. So, put it out of your mind, folks. This verse, our body is a temple, it's not just sexual sin. It's all sin. It's all sin. And I, I defy you, or excuse me, I challenge you to show me otherwise in Scripture. You can't do it. God just doesn't say, well, sexually you got to be right. No. Paul very clearly says, you were bought with a price. Glorify God in your body. You can dice it, chip it up in the Greek, look at it ten ways from Sunday, and it's still the same. How our, we live our life is important. And how we live our life is going to show, what, it's really going to show what you believe in Jesus Christ. If you can set and say out of one mouth, that you believe the Lord Jesus and out of the same mouth bring forth cursings, bring forth bad talk, bring forth uh, getting on somebody or saying stuff negative or lying or gossiping or blank, blank, blank. If you can bring forth that out of the same mouth, you better check the relationship you say you have. Because it does not befit the follower of the Lord Jesus Christ to be able to take his body and do that way, us being the temple. Now, I'm not going to say that you won't fall, uh, slip and stumble. Of course you will. But that doesn't mean that you actively participate in the things of this world. If we're believers, we live like believers. And, and folks, when we say that we're believers, and when we follow after the pattern of the world, we're lying to the Holy Spirit. And we're saying the, the power of the Spirit's not strong enough because we don't want to battle our flesh. Anyway, my, I'm past my time. I hope you enjoyed this today. Keep on studying. Keep walking in the things of the Lord. He's going to see us through. Remember, I love you. My family loves you more than that. Jesus Christ loves you. You've been bought with a price. Now walk in Him. God bless you. Bye-bye.